guys. Uh, the fight of the night was Dern versus Hill. Uh, performance of the night went to Slava and Diego. They all won $50,000. Who's got the first question? That'll be me today. No John Morgan. So I'm Hi. Be <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I just got to know what you thought of that main event because it was... So badass. I'm so glad that that's the fight we moved to the main event here tonight. Um, let me start with, first of all, Mackenzie Dern looked unbelievable tonight. So aggressive. I mean, uh, I don't know what you guys thought, but I thought this was going to be one of those fights where Angela Hill came out, stand up, trying to take it to her, and, and Mackenzie was going to do everything in her power to get it to the ground, try and submit her. And uh, to see Mackenzie's stand up, you know, the punches, the knees, actually hurting Angela Hill, who's tough as nails. Then, on the flip side, Angela Hill, who's so tough and durable, you know, getting into these positions, you know, arm barred twice, stayed out of it. Gets hit with that big knee, gets taken down, and still has, you know, the wherewithal to stay out of submissions. And it was a badass fight. It, it was as good of a main event as you could ever hope for. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, for everyone who's watching this thing right now, if you didn't see the fight today, you should go to ESPN Plus and watch the main event. Um, the whole card's great, but the main event is pretty badass. There were also two fighters uh, making their debuts in different weight divisions tonight that performed really well, Chase Hooper and Joaquin Buckley. I'm just curious if, what you thought of those performances as well. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously uh, uh, Hooper, you know, always fun. And, uh, you know, the back and forth w w with the submission game, was awesome. Great win for him. And then, you know, Buckley, uh, beautiful head kick knockout. I mean, it was, it was a good card. Great performances. And, uh, yeah. Loopy asked for a fight on September 16th. I don't know if there's one scheduled yet. Do you know if there's going to be a fight on I there? don't either. <laughs> that makes two of us. Um, Somebody else said they wanted to fight again. It, was, it, was it just Loopy or somebody else said September 2 that they wanted to fight? Maybe it was just just loopy, but I don't remember, but I, I don't know. Off the top of my head right here, right now, I don't know. And I know I asked you last week if there was any update on Connor and, and Michael Chandler. Um, he, Connor has said that there will be an announcement for the fight during the airing of Tough. Is that correct? That's correct. So there's a fight signed? There's a fight. Okay. Any well, he has to get into the USADA pool first. He's, he's filling out the paperwork. I don't know how soon that'll be done or what's going on, but that's, that's his business that he's handling with USADA, and, uh, but it's all in motion. Can we expect that this year, the fight? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we're shooting for. I mean, uh, we, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, we have a big fight in Madison Square Garden in November and then a big fight in December. You also announced the BMF title is gonna be on the line again. <clears throat> Curious what the um, decision was to, to bring that back. Yeah, you know, war room shit every Tuesday. We're in there, and, uh, you know, as we were putting that card together for Utah, we thought that Poirier and, and um, Gaethje is such an awesome fight. Masvidal retired, so we put the BMF up. You, you have no idea how many of these fighters want to fight for the BMF title. They all, they all want to fight for that belt, so it's fun. It's different, so we'll do it again. Could we potentially see that belt come around a little more often now? Is that something that maybe they'll need to defend? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, when you think about coming up with it the first time, those are the two right guys, and so are these. These are the two right guys for that, too. And, um, you know, whether that thing's in play or not in play, that fight is what it is. But everybody wants that belt, so what the hell? Has Masvidal talked to you at all about that? Is he given his blessing or commented at all? No, no. Uh, we, I haven't talked to Masvidal about it. And um, we also got to ask about Francis Sagana going to PFL. I'm just curious about your thoughts on that deal. Um, you know, based on what I know about the deal, which is not much, um, it makes no sense to me. I mean, you're going to pay a guy not to fight for a year, and it's already been like 18 months. He's fought three times in the last three years. It's just not what we do here. It's just, it's not, it's not what we do. And the day that we released him, I knew exactly what was gonna happen. And uh, Francis wants to take zero risks. Doesn't wanna take any chances. Um, 
And he did, obviously didn't want to take a chance against John Jones. And after we saw what happened with Cyril Gaon, you know, I, I don't blame him. I think the outcome would have been exactly the same. And I'm sure most of you do, and I'm sure Francis does too. Um, you know, and the media makes it sound like that I'm saying that he's afraid of him. Now, I don't think that he's afraid of anybody. It's just the fact that he doesn't want to take any risk. He wants to, you know, PFL's going to pay this guy to train for a boxing match that may not even happen and that they might not even be involved in. How, how does that make any sense? It, it, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, Anthony Joshua called it a gimmick fight this week. You know, he, he, when asked about that fight, he's like, I'm focused on fighting the best guys in the world. You know, I'm not interested in a gimmick fight right now. And that's one of the big problems with boxing right now is it's, it's all about these gimmicky type fights. And that's just not what I do here. It's not what I do. I, I put on fights with the best fighters in the world and, 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 and fights that people want to see. Francis could have done a, a deal here. Hunter threw the kitchen sink at that guy. You know, Hunter went to more dinners with Francis and Ganyu and, and, and did everything in his power to try to get this fight done. And, you know, Francis just thinks like, that he's in a position where he's got some Conor McGregor Mayweather fight on his hands, which he does not. That, that, that fight was like a once in a lifetime type deal, fight that I wasn't very interested in. Um, and, uh, but, but at the end of the day, it became so big the right guys, the right time, the right place. The fans wanted it, so, so we did it, and we got it done. Um, MMA guys versus boxers doesn't make any sense to me, um, but I know that he thinks there's, there's all this money in it. I disagree. I, I don't think there is, and, and, and I have no beef with the PFL. I mean, these guys have always been um, super professional and um, you know, never talked any smack. You know me. If I don't like you, whether it's De La Hoya or another, uh, you know, uh, organization out there, whatever it is, you know, I, I don't hold back. I'll let you have it. But, um, you know, what they're doing makes no sense to me, Th their business strategy. I'm hearing that they're uh, raising money right now, you know, $280 million, $300 million, I don't know what the number is, from the Middle East. And I've done a lot of business in the Middle East. Those guys are sharp, and they know what to do. I don't know who in the hell would give them $280 million because I'm hearing they're buying Bellator, right? So you're an organization that's burning cash, have no ratings and selling no tickets, and you're going to raise $280 million to buy a company that's burning cash, sells no tickets, and does no ratings. It sounds fucking absolutely genius to me. Um, and I don't know. Uh, I know how this story ends. I, I, I get what Francis is doing. I wish the PFL all the luck in the world. I wish him all the luck in the world. It's, it's just not what we do here. Um, you know, right now when you think about it, he's going to this company. I don't know what they're paying him or what's going on or any of that stuff. He, he's not even fighting their champions. You know what I mean? He, he wants to box. He signs with this company, and he's not even willing to fight their champions right now. He's fought three times in the last three years, and he's, it's been like 18 months since he's fought, and from what I'm hearing, he's not going to fight for another year. All the stuff that's being talked about, it's all bullshit by the media. The media is creating all this bullshit. It's, it's just, it's like, I, I had to hit, listen to this fucking... Robin Black, who looks like he came out of a fucking 1997 fucking time warp, talking shit. If anybody needs a makeover, somebody please help that dude. Get, get him. What's that show on TV? Major Makeover or whatever the fuck it is. Somebody sign Robin Black up for that thing. This guy's out there talking all this shit about, um, you know, oh, we're, we're just all about marketing, not the best fighters in the world, and all, all this really stupid shit. So a lot of this stuff's just coming from the media. Um, but when you think about Francis, Francis, you know, uh, their last champion, or maybe it was his current champion, lost to Tibera, right? And then the champion now, I think, lost to Yuri Prohaska in the first round, who isn't even a heavyweight. Francis doesn't want to fight these two guys now. 
Am I the only one that, that, that this whole thing is just a bunch of bullshit? So that's my two cents. Uh, my last question, hopefully a fun one. Uh, McGregor's documentary came out this week. I'm just curious, when can we expect your Netflix documentary? <laughs> never, never. I'm, I'm not into that kind of stuff. I've been, believe me, I get offers for all kinds of books and this and that. I'm, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not interested in that type of stuff at all. Movie roles, none of that shit. This is what I do. This is what I like to do. I'll, I'll literally never do any of that stuff. But thank you. He gave him a bonus, so I think we could tell you liked his performance, but Diego Fajeda coming in on the three-fight skin and then doing what he did to Michael Johnson, what can you think about, what do you think about his performance and just how good he looked tonight? Yeah, I agree. That's what we were talking about tonight. You know, Michael Johnson is one of these guys that's, I, I think he's been finished three times or less in his entire career. And, uh, yeah, what a hell of a performance tonight by him. Um, yeah, impre impressive. Another guy that didn't get a bonus that had a pretty good performance, Joaquin Buckley. What do you think about that performance? And uh, was he possibly close from the running for getting a bonus? Yeah, he definitely was. And I'll, and I'll take care of Buckley. I'll give him something else too. But, you know, I, I think that when you look at Dern and Hill, obviously, you know, the fight of the night. And then uh, have you ever seen a cleaner combination than Slava threw? How it landed and, and it literally the fight should have been over right there. He shouldn't even have had the opportunity to jump on that guy and hit him again. Um, and then, obviously, we were just talking about Diego. So the, I think the bonuses were dead on tonight, and, uh, but I'll take care of Buckley. Dern in the post-fight had called out, and she called out Jan and said Rose, but as a matchup with Rose, is that a fight that you would like to see? In, uh, Who did, Dern? Dern. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know right now. But obviously, yeah, it's a fun fight, too. Um, you know, I, I think Mackenzie's in a in a really good position after tonight's performance. And, uh, I mean, she's never looked meaner than she looked tonight. I mean, she came out on a, on a mission, man. She looked like she was in great shape. She fought hard for five rounds. Um, her stand-up, you know, was on point. She hurt Angela Hill several times with her stand-up and uh, was all over her on the ground. So, I, I, other than pulling off a knockout, or a, or a sub, she couldn't have had a better performance than tonight. So I, I think anything is possible for her. Uh, just a few on the outside. Uh, Jim Brown recently passed away, you know, and he was a big help to the organization when it first got it started. I don't know if you had thoughts on his passing and on maybe what he meant to the organization at its start. Well, you know, obviously he wasn't around d during, during my era, but, you know, he's a guy who helped launch the UFC. And, and uh, you know, we, we, we paid respect to him tonight not only on, on the broadcast, but, you know, all over social media, too. And, uh, but the guy lived a great life, man. I think he was 87 when he passed. And, and uh, you know, he obviously has some history here at the UFC. So, yeah, we, we, we showed him the love and respect tonight. Awesome. Uh, talking about Aljo and O'Malley, it looks like the fight had been verbally agreed upon, but then we see Aljo go on in, uh, social media saying, like, well, if my body feels good, I'll be, I guess I'll be ready or something. And then you have O'Malley saying... Well, regardless, I'll be there and I'll be fighting for a title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah he's sure fighting. They're... It's it's I. Do you want me to explain what's going on in the mind of fucking Aljo? I it's it's. I was in the gym this morning working out. I got I got a call that Aljo said. You know, I got a call from. Three guesses who called me today and said, uh, Aljo sounds like he doesn't really want to fight. Three guesses. Hundred bucks right now for whoever can guess it. Henry. Who? Henry. <laughs> oh, oh shit. What up? I'm the first man. <laughs> man of his word. <laughs> Henry Cejudo calls me and says, This little pussy doesn't want to fight. I'll take the fight. I'm I'm throwing my hat in right now. Let, let's do it. I'll I'll fight O'Malley. Da 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 da. So Hunter is my neighbor, comes over to my house, said, what's going on? You know, and, and, and I think, you know, we, we got his manager on the phone, stuff like that, it's just, all Joe's one of those guys who just can't get out of his own way. You know, apparently he's in for the fight. Why he said that, who knows, it's just, yeah. But this, if he, th this is my life, brother, this is my life. But if that fight? The fight is on. Okay, I don't wanna. I, the I, fight I, is absolutely positively on. Awesome. Yes. Um, another fight that, you know, people, you know, it seems to be sort of setting itself out on social media and 
uh, Chmaev and Usman going back and forth. I know I read somewhere, I thought you said like, Usman said something about catch weight, and you're like, no way, a catch weight would have to be at middleweight. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Is that a fight? Well, I that think a fight that possibility? it's a fight that Usman wants. That, that's no secret. Usman literally came to the office to, to lobby for that fight. Um, I told him I love him. Usman is, is one of the best guys we've ever worked with. I love working with the guy. You know, look at all the things he's accomplished. I don't do catch weights. Don't do it. Um, you know, so you know how Hamzad is. If you talk shit to Hamzad, Hamzad's going to go right at it with you and, and doesn't care who he fights and all that stuff. So um, I don't know. We, we, obviously, we have, we've been making a lot of announcements lately. We haven't made that announcement yet because we don't have a fight done yet. But we're working on stuff for Hamzad. Gotcha. And last one for me. Uh, Alexa Grasso, we have any sort of update on when we might see her in again? And it seemed like the rematch with Valentina was what was going to happen, but is there any, any talk of what's going on with her? Yeah, we're working on that too. Awesome. That, that's, def, that's one of the fights that we're definitely working on right now. Awesome. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Dana. Yep. Um, I just wanted your thoughts on Carolina Kolokiewicz. Um, you know, she was on a five-fight losing skid, comes back. She's won three in a row, resurgent. Like, what do you say to a fighter like that? No, I, I agree with you. Um, she looked great tonight. Couple things that I was watching when she when she was fighting. If you noticed in the beginning, um, her opponent came out and started throwing body kicks. She caught the body kicks and was drilling her with right hands. And uh, I, I was fascinated by that because she didn't throw another kick again till the third round. So I asked her after the fight, "Did you guys watch tape on her?" And and they they started laughing and said, "Yeah, we saw that she always likes to throw that right body kick. We were catching, we practiced the whole camp catching them and drilling her with right hands, and, and and it worked. She stayed on the outside. She picked her apart. I mean, she looked damn good tonight. I literally talked to her after the fight and said, "That's the best I've seen you look in a long time. Congratulations." So yes, I agree with you, and and uh, yeah, I let her know that she had a great performance. And like, is she just like a, a perfect case where like you see these fighters go on skids, right? And they're like, oh, she's done. She's gonna retire, and then maybe change the camp, change the mindset, and they come back. And that's a great question. Uh, did she come back here tonight? No. Yeah. What did, did you ask her that? You're asking me. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to know now, too. Uh, uh, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I don't know, but, but that would make sense. E either that or, you know, some nights just aren't your night and some nights are, you know. Uh, everything just sort of comes together. You, you know, you have a great camp. You, you, your, your team breaks down your opponent and everything just goes the right way. I don't know the answer to that question, but I would love to know the answer to that, too. Um, yeah, I agree with you. There's another uh, female fighter on, on the second fight of the prelims, Natalia Silva. Her last two fights, and she's been finishing girls. I mean, is, is, is she, and she, you know, with the flyweight division wanting prospects, like, is, is she one to, to look out for? So, I'm on a, we're on a group chat, me, the matchmakers, and Hunter. And I was driving over here, and I missed that fight, and these guys were all going crazy about that fight. I missed it. I'd love, I would love to talk to you about that fight, but I missed that fight tonight. But these guys were all in the, in the group chat going crazy over that fight. I, um, I missed it. Um, something outside of the tonight, uh, I just wanted to know the mindset. Like, so Sean Strickland and Paula Costa, two top seven middleweights, they're fighting, their next fights are going to be two unranked fighters that only have one fight in the organization. I just wanted to know, is it more of a you want – uh, new juice in that division, or is it like like what's what's the what's? Hmm. Yeah, that's that that is uh, what we try to do. Is obviously when you have a division, Costa hasn't fought in a long time. You know what I mean. Strickland's been fighting a, a lot, so yes, the answer is yes. We like to bring guys in and, and see where they're at and see how they. Um, you know, obviously the dude that Paulo Costa is fighting is. Tough as nails. You don't know how good some guys are until you get them in there into the top 15. Um, and you think, when we're in the matchmaking room, we think some guys are ready for that step and some guys we don't know. So they might fight 15, 14, whatever. And a lot of times, if, if, if guys, listen, what, what is said in public is never what really goes on behind the scenes, you know? And it's not my job to come out and try to make guys look bad. Um, but, you know, both of these guys are fighting tough guys that are, you know, that aren't ranked. It's like tonight. I'll give you another perfect example. Mackenzie Dern, who I think is ranked number eight in the world, 
is taking on number 14, Angela Hill, who has like a, uh, like a 15 and 13 record, right? Dangerous fight for her. Dangerous fight. Angela Hill is 15 and 13 because those 13 fights that she lost were exactly like tonight, and she fought like all the baddest women in the world. Um, but for Mackenzie to take that risk, I mean, that's what this is all about. That's really what goes on here. We, 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 we challenge people. And, and, you know, number eight doesn't always fight number six or number five. It's just not the way it works. I hope I explained that right. Kind of. Um, so UFC 293, Sydney. Are you saying you wanted to see Costa versus Strickland? I mean, it makes, it makes, kind of sense. It makes some sense. It does? I mean, both of them coming off wins. Uh, both of them, they, 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 they wanted to fight each other. I don't know. It just kind of makes more sense than, than both fighting unranked um, fighters, but I'm not a matchmaker. Well, <laughs> let's see what happens that night when the fights happen. Very true. <laughs> um, UFC 293 is in Sydney. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you're hoping Israel Asanya headlines that card, but with Robert and Drickus fighting two months prior at International Fight Week, is that, are you kind of it's kind of going to be a quick turnaround for the winner of that fight. Are you kind of thinking about that? or? We'll, we'll make that announcement soon. And, and then fin finally, yeah. um, just the 30th anniversary card's coming up. You got something cool, cool uh, planned for that? Too? Nah, not really. We'll, we're just going to throw some shit on that card. <laughs> yes. We, 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 we will bring it for UFC 30. Um, you know, I, I mean, if you look at this year, I mean, we've been putting on some badass fights this year. And, and as good as the year opens up and as good as the summer is, you know that when, once we get into the fall, you know, it just gets better and better and better. And every year we go, how the hell are we going to beat last year? And we end up doing it. I mean, I think, I think people were shocked when we announced the Utah card and how really good the Utah card is. There, there were memes like, does Utah have pictures of Dana or some shit like that? Um, that's how good the Utah card is. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, buddy? Hi, how you doing? Good. Uh, Aljo, his, his next opponent's death, obviously uh, O'Malley, but he's been heard saying that he's interested in moving up in weight, uh, another division. Have who, who? Aljo? Uh, Aljo. Has he ever said anything to you guys about that, changing divisions? Aljo. Aljo's fucking up this whole press conference tonight. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't know what Aljo's doing. Aljo will be in Boston versus O'Malley. That's happening. Great. And then uh, uh, Grimbo, uh, he defeated Sato for his first win for the first fight of the night tonight. He came back here uh, talking about how he came over here broke, sleeping on the couch, had $7 in his bank account. When you hear stories like this of what the fighters go through, uh, and how they lay it out on all the line. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of shows out what a great sport this is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the things that I love. You know, not just this sport, but one of the things that I love about combat sports in general. You know what I mean? Most of the people that, that, that uh, compete in combat sports in general come from tough upbringings, come from tough backgrounds, um, face a lot of adversity before they ever make it. Um, and, and they have the opportunity to change their families' lives and, 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 and do these great things. Subject you guys love talking about, Power Slap, live, free on Rumble this Wednesday night. Um, it, it's the same thing with these guys now. This thing didn't exist three months ago. It did, but very, very different than what it is now. And the money that's, that's in the sport for these guys is, is life-changing money for these guys. It's, it's um, you know, it, it's, it's, what's fun for me is it's almost like what you were just saying about, you know, the kid that fought tonight in the first fight telling, you know, his story of adversity to, to get here and change his life. I mean, that's exactly what's going on there with these guys. And, and uh, we're lucky that we've been as successful as we were in, 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 in such a short amount of time. There's real money in this thing now, and, 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 it, and it literally, think about, you know, Garcia and Tank Davis, another fight that when you talk about putting on fights that people want to see and that fans are interested in, I don't even think the promoters realized what they had with that fight, because I think they were all shocked by the gate 
and they were all shocked by the pay-per-view. Um, but really, when you step back and look at it after, after the thing plays out, there's nothing shocking about it. Garcia, this good-looking kid, you know, who, who, who basically was built on the internet, right? You know, they had all these great videos of him, how fast he was and all this stuff. And Tank Davis, who's a bad little motherfucker, right? And when you get these guys going, had Garcia won that fight, he'd be the new De La Hoya. I mean, he would be the new De La Hoya. Um, but my point to this, this whole thing is, those are the type of fights that people want to see. Those are the kind of guys that people want to see in fights. And those are the kind of fights that will sell. There's so much gimmicky shit going on right now that when a fight like that pops up and catches the imagination of fight fans, it blows up. And it's just, it's one of the many things that I love about being in this sport. Uh, talking about the power slap, uh, what's, what's the difference going to be between the first season and the second season? So, so the first season... Um, was done here in the United States, and you know how this country is. You, you, you know, right now you can't get anybody in the country from anywhere. This stuff originated in Poland and uh, Russia. So I'm doing the second season in Abu Dhabi, and we will get the baddest dudes from all over the world. This thing is big in Russia. It's big in Poland. It's big in uh, South Africa. Uh, it, it took off in India and uh, Australia. So we'll bring in like like the ba the baddest dudes in the world for slapping in, in, in Abu Dhabi. Then we'll have the finale. Then the winners of that finale will fight these guys, uh, you know, that'll all be slapping uh, on Wednesday. Will there be a difference in uh, a bump up of pay or the way it's filmed? There, there's already a bump strategy. up in pay. Yeah, yeah, that's already changed. So, you know, uh, the first season, I, I, I told you guys, me, me and the Fertitas funded the first season and uh, we're good now, so. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in a really good spot, and yeah, everything's going to change over the next couple of years for this thing. Yeah. Good? A quick one, Dana, just uh, yep. two for me. Let me circle real quick back to the boxing. We're, uh, did you hear what happened last weekend at the Showtime with the Barrosos and rolling stoppage? With the controversy with Tony Weeks, your opinion on that? I, I didn't see it, but I heard some stuff about that, but I, I couldn't. You know, I, I, I'm not educated on it enough to, to speak about it. I, 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 I didn't see it. I just heard a little bit about it. Right. Early stoppage by the ref? A little controversial or questionable, so whenever you do, we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, with the boxing, for example, tonight we had that big pay-per-view across the street, MGM. Did that boost up tonight's fight night that was already trending? Did that kind of give it like a little uh, more... Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, Gervonta Davis and, and... Oh, no, with tonight. With the oh, tonight? Chenko. Kind of like the lead-in was the fight night. Did that give you guys even more traffic, more uh, like a boost coming into that? I don't want to be a dick, but I didn't even know that fight was happening until yesterday. <laughs> Seriously. But maybe, I don't know. I, I, this is what I truly believe. I believe that on a night when you have multiple combat sports on that people are interested in seeing, more people will stay home. I tell you guys all the time, my competition is whatever's going on on Saturday night, Right? It could be the new movie. It could be you got to take your wife out to dinner. It could be anything. But when you have multiple things on television at night, especially in combat sports, because a lot of combat sports people don't watch a lot of other sports. So when you have multiple things on, on the same night, I can tell you this, it definitely doesn't hurt. So whoever stayed home tonight and watched this fight night, um, you know, this fight night probably leads right into, I saw them advertising the shit out of it on the show tonight, which probably leads right into the fight. It definitely can't hurt either one of us. Excellent. And with the switch up in uh, June, how's that trending? What Eden is stepping in for Juliana? Did, uh, did that get more people talking about it, more ticket sales in Canada? Well, Canada was sold out anyway. Yeah. Canada was sold out. Listen, one thing we don't have a problem doing is selling tickets. Tick tickets sell. I mean, this, this last uh, fight we did in North Carolina was the biggest uh, American fight night ever in the history of, of, of us putting on fight nights. So, um, yeah, ticket sales are not a problem. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. You guys done with me? Have a great weekend.